Hello, and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast. I'm Terry Morrow, and I'm here with Catherine Holeko. Say hi, Catherine. Hi, Terry. Usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Catherine and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics, because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. This week, we watched our second Sorkin-free episode of The West Wing Season 5, and for our challenge round, we watched a familiar actress in an unfamiliar venue. But first, we continued our Trophy Wife watch with a wedding two-parter. What did you think of the wedding part one and two there, Catherine? Well, I was surprised that we got Megan Mullally. Yes. (laughs) And Florence Henderson, (laughs) two (laughs) guest stars. Yeah. um, That I wasn't, I I didn't know were coming, so that was kind of (laughs) fun. Yeah. Um, Megan Mullally kind of playing a... um, a version of Tammy. Too. Yeah, who knew that Tammy was Kate's mom? Does that make Ron her dad? I uh, don't even want to think, go there. But um, yeah, does, does Megan Mullally ever not play that basic character? Does she ever play I mean, a quiet character with boundaries and um, you know? Right, because Karen Walker is yes. a similar. Um, yes. Situation. Not so, so much with the reserved, uh, quiet, <laughs> thoughtful. No characters for her she's no. always okay we need somebody who can turn the dial up to 11 right hey, what's or, megan or possibly 15 <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah she was quite a handful um mm-hmm. poor kate <laughs> yes you definitely felt bad for so it kate does explain a lot about why she can put up with the ex-wives popping in all the time because if that was her mother and she had that experience growing up she's right. she's got some She's got some defenses, that girl. <laughs> she is able yes. to cope with the crazy. Mm-hmm. In a big way. <laughs> yes. So that was kind of fun. And then, um, you know, spoiler, the actual wedding itself that takes place at the end of the second um, yes. episode, I, as usual, did not figure it out ahead of time. <laughs> I didn't either. And I saw it before, so... <laughs> you forgot. I that knew that the happened. weird people in in like full costumes that was going to be something, uh-huh. but I wasn't. I didn't remember what. Right, and um, so yeah, the wedding they actually did it on the airplane <laughs> on their way to a funeral. Yes, um, and <laughs> it was very cute, and Kate especially was. More moved by it than probably most people, yes. I think, would have been. <laughs> um, and also, I think that that airplane crew was extremely permissive because yes. I don't think that would happen no. <laughs> on, a, on a commercial flight today. Yeah, so. it reminded me of, did you um, did you see the movie The Wedding Singer? Yes. There's a similar romantic presentation performed on an airplane. Yes. With Billy Idol. Yes. <laughs> yes. I think it, what's more likely to happen is the stuff, what happens in Bridesmaids where they all get kicked yes, off the exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, it was very cute. It was, if you have to do a cute, fake, uh, weird situation for a wedding and, and Meg's uh, cinematography skills seemed appropriate to her also. <laughs> right. She winds up with a video of her chin. Of Meg's chin. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, there's so many sitcoms that have to do wedding yes. episodes, right? And so there's you're always looking for, like, new <laughs> and different ways That's to right. do them. So they, they found one. Good yes, job. yes, definitely. And I also pr- appreciated the stuff in the first uh, of the two-parter where it looked like Kate was possibly going to be uh, – in trouble because she had a marriage of convenience and she was going right. to, uh, she was, you know, that she had done it to stay in the country. And then when the, I was trying to remember what happened when the, the in, inspector was at their house interviewing them. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I remembered that, yes, all the crazy descends and it's clear that nobody would put up with this. <laughs> just, right. just for a marriage, of, not a marriage of convenience because everything about it is inconvenient. Inconvenient, exactly. So, yes. All the the wives and children came in handy in the end. Yes. All the stuff Which that was Kate also clever. With. Yes. That you know, was a nicely nice, done. A nice um, way to use the story. Yes. You know. And I also Earth. enjoyed the running plot of Bert and Warren being adorable no matter what they did. <laughs> 
they wanted to be because manly, and instead it was, oh, look at Constant them. adorableness. They could not escape. <laughs> yes. Whether they're wearing kilts or suits. Seer suckers. <laughs> you just want to pinch their cheeks mm-hmm. and gush over them. So yes. cute. And I'm not sure about the the putting the cologne in your hair, Bert, but... Uh, or <laughs> yes. scraping your cheeks raw, or maybe <laughs> maybe taking it a little too far, but uh, very cute. So yeah, uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, that was an interesting little two barter there. And uh, you know, as as always, every time I think it's going to go some, to something I don't want to watch, they find a way to switch it and have it be okay. Uh-huh. So very funny. I I was sure something was going to happen with the shrimp because Meg took the shrimp out of the fridge yes, and put her cupcakes in. So I was waiting for everybody to have food poisoning. I was thinking, yes. oh, they're going to be in the plane and everybody's going to be sick or they're going to be uh, at the wedding and everybody. Yep. I guess expecting a bridesmaid scene of some sort there too. Yeah. <laughs> but I, uh, I but no. The same. I guess somebody put it back in the fridge. <laughs> Probably Hillary. <laughs> That's right. She is on it, that girl. Yeah. Um but, uh, yeah, enjoyable. Not too many episodes left of that. I think we have maybe a couple more weeks. Um, no, this and this felt like a season ender. Yeah. You know, yeah, it could wedding. easily have been. So we'll see with what actually ends the season is as good as this would have been. Right. But uh, very nice. And mm-hmm. so moving from that to, to something that also came to a kind of a, a resolution in this uh, episode... We watched the second episode of season five of The West Wing, episode two in the non-Sorkin era, and the episode that rather abruptly wraps up the mess that Sorkin left for them. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Unlike unlike, uh, the folks on the West Wing Weekly podcast, I was fine with the abrupt resolution. Let's get this over with. Let's move on, shall we? I don't care how they found her. They found her. Bartlett's back in the office. Let's go move on. Let's move on. <laughs> I didn't need, I didn't think they were saying maybe it should have been to, oh, one more episode. No, no. <laughs> Finish like, this no, no, up. no, no, no. <laughs> and it reminded me of the, um, when they were saying that, that we never really found out how they found her. We just get very sketchy details. And mm-hmm. it reminded me of, there was an episode early on, I think the first episode that Mike Casper was in, where they found some person they were looking for because he had a broken taillight and he got pulled over for that and that's how they found him and and they said something like all the investigation in the world can't make up for the person you're looking for being stupid Mm -hmm. so that wasn't exactly the same case here but sometimes stuff just breaks for no reason at all you're working at it you're working at it you're putting every investigative power possible towards it and then somebody just happens to wander off into a field and find a barn you know it's uh-huh. just yeah so i was based based on that i was fine with it that sometimes you just get a break uh-huh. and i think the fact that zoe looked as wrecked as she did oh my god indicates that this isn't going to be an easy wrap up you know there's going to be right. repercussions yeah but um you know she's not like oh mom dad thank goodness you're here no that she, was unpleasant it was really heartbreaking to see <laughs> yes. her Yes, it was. Oh, and gosh, Charlie went with him, of course. And he just, oh, Charlie. Um, so that, I was glad to get that done. And I think, honestly, I think Walken was glad to get that done. I really liked that scene with him and Debbie, where he was yes. calling people to, to, you know, because their, their kid died doing something he ordered them to do. And uh-huh. he looked like, you know, I never wanted this. Now that I right. have it, I don't like it. <laughs> Could we just wrap this ready up? Ready to too? give it back. Yes, ready yeah. to give it back. Would have liked to fly it on Air Force One, but other than that, yeah, this ain't for me. So right. I thought that was a nice touch because you always, I mean, they were imagining the Republicans, you know, uh, taking advantage of this and being power hungry. And he was just, you know, this is not my thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I liked that. I thought that was an interesting little scene. And uh, the great. You know, Lily Tomlin just yes. kind of treating him like she treats everybody exactly. else. <laughs> exactly. She wasn't really giving him any sympathy, but she was not, you Being know, she disrespectful. was meeting yeah. him on an even uh, field. Uh, yes. Yeah, I liked their interaction very much. Mm-hmm. I thought that was very good. So, and all in all, great performance by John Goodman. 
definitely yes. felt like you knew who that character was. Um, mm-hmm. And off he goes into the sunset to, I don't know, write again one day. But uh, <laughs> he will Plays always be golf, an asterisk. Maybe. He'll always have that going for him. That's true. <laughs> will be in his obituary. Yeah. Was yeah. president for, what, 48 hours or something? <laughs> yeah, I know. And- Not too long. And then they're leaving behind this really uh, unpleasant speaker of the house who will be yeah. doing getting into more trouble in the time to come. Mm-hmm. As I look forward to shut down. Uh, but anyway, uh, what else did you think about this episode? I, I was I was very, very happy to have the West Wing Weekly back at home, just the two of them. Yes. No live stuff, no questions from the audience, no guests, just... Hey, how about if we talk about this episode for like 40 minutes? Yeah. I am there that for that. Good. I I enjoyed that a lot. Yes. Um having them having them back. Yes. And you know, I mean, a lot of times I I enjoy the guests yes. that they have. Yeah. Um cuz they usually do add some insight. Um, right. Insights. Right. Um but like you said, it is very nice to just kind of go back to basics. And, yeah. Um hear from just Rishi and Joshua yes. about their thoughts and, um, you know, some of the things that they picked out. I also did, um, mm-hmm. like the, the scene with, um, the secretary of state where he's like, well, this is kind of like, <laughs> yeah. Pearl what the Harbor. Heck? And I was confused by that. Yes, I was well. too. So, and uh, but yeah. in general, yeah, I, I liked having them back and hearing their thoughts yes. and, yeah, uh, yeah. I think so, it was a fine episode. Uh, uh, unfortunately, marks they de- the debut of a character I had completely forgotten about and remember not liking very much, which is the, the intern. The intern, <laughs> R- Ryan was his name. Ryan. Yes, Ryan. Yeah, I I don't have good memories of that character. What few memories I have, although mm-hmm. apparently the actor was very pleasant. Uh, but um, yeah, I was like, oh, this guy. I remember this guy. <laughs> Here we go. But I, I did enjoy him falling as they were walking yes. and talking. <laughs> you know, come on. The newbie's got to gotta figure out a way to do this. Right. <laughs> and as they pointed out in the in the podcast, yeah. like a, a fun little, um, you know, mention of the walk and talk. Right. You guys always walk this fast. <laughs> you know, just a little shout out to Aaron yes, Sorkin. Yes, Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. So, uh, all right. So now they're they're going to be getting back sort of to normal with the next episode, and we'll see how they bring the Sorkin when when they're the president's back. Although it's going to, as you know, as we could tell, looking at Zoe and the family and the first lady looking out the window and mm-hmm. certain fractures uh, going on, it's not going to be business as usual for a while. Right. Which is why. I'm looking forward to a particular episode in the future where everybody kind of gets theirs back. But <laughs> uh, in meanwhile, we'll at least be back to the normal crew in the Oval Office and folks trying to uh, I, uh, get, get, get going again. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how that goes. I did enjoy the uh, Josh and Amy scene where she's yes. right outside the door. That was fun. <laughs> And I was thinking what she was thinking. Why didn't you just admit I woke you up? <laughs> really, what's wrong with that? But that is like a like a universal human thing. You yes. never want to tell someone. Exactly. <laughs> they woke you up. <laughs> like, everything you said she had something for, you know? Right. <laughs> Do you want some coffee? Oh, you have coffee. Do you want to do the mess? Oh, you have bagels. <laughs> very nice. That was a little bit of fun in a very tense situation. Yes. Absolutely. And Toby got to hold a baby. And uh, yeah. that was a baby that looked about, you know, three right, months old, right. but that's okay. And he still can't give her his house, so. I know. <sighs> Come on, Andy. Take the house. Take the house. <laughs> she gave him the house. <laughs> we need another t-shirt. <laughs> oh, anyway. So, all right. Well, that was the Dogs of War. We interrupt this podcast to remind you to please consider the free Radio Public app for all your parenting roundabout listening needs. If you listen to our podcast on the app, we'll get paid a little for each listen and more if you listen a lot. It's a great way to financially support our podcast without having to actually spend, you know, money. Now on to our challenge round. 
Our challenge round was uh, an episode of White Collar from season one. I had been thinking this was something I would do as a challenge round, just to introduce you to the wide range of USA procedurals that you somehow missed. Mm -hmm. Uh, And our hook for this one was going to be that Natalie Morales, who was in quite a lot of uh, Trophy Wife this week as co-maid of honor uh, Meg, Mm -hmm. uh, I had found out was in about seven or eight episodes of White Collar as Agent Lauren Cruz. And so I thought, well, let's watch an episode with her in it, and we'll see her in something completely different. Unfortunately, this particular episode, which was her first on White Collar, uh, the second episode of the series, she wasn't in all that much. So we had a few episodes, of uh, a few uh, scenes of her being, you know, procedural version Natalie Morales, as opposed to sitcom version Natalie Morales, with Uh which we are very, very familiar. Right. So, you know, she did fine. She delivered her lines. She had a little bit of spark. You know, she was a little funny. she had a little bit of that, like, sort of sarcasticness that um, we get from her in other shows. Very limited time. And she, in the end, is the one who brought the guy down in her Mm -hmm. jogging outfit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, nice, nice going there, Natalie, with the extremely skinny clothing and, um, you know, FBI polyester pantsuit. When you first see her, she's wearing a dress to, you know, go to a party and look like <laughs> yes. a model. And holy cow, I don't know how she's breathing in that thing. Because I do not either. And indeed, where do you put your gun? Good question. Right. Um, but, yeah. What is it with the costuming on USA shows, folks? Really? Right. <sighs> She's not going to be eating the bagels, but um, <laughs> yeah. So she, that was kind of kind of fun to see her, and you yeah. know, I may watch some more of those uh, those uh, first episodes to see her do some more. If she, I'm not sure she ever does, because perhaps this is why I don't remember that she was on the show is because mm-hmm. she didn't do anything much. Because her it, part was it's a pretty small. straightforward proce- forward procedural, at least for the agents. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, but it reminded me how cute this show was and how much I enjoyed it. And it was really fun watching it with no commercials because it went by really fast. It sure did. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it with my husband who I watched it with originally. And, uh, it was fun for us to watch it again and just, just see it go by. Zip. <laughs> <laughs> Not much fiber. It's just a fun. Just fun. Procedural. And, uh, I really enjoy, um, Burke, the the FBI agent. Mm-hmm. Tim Decay brings a really nice mix of professionalism and vulnerability to it. He's so cute when he's with his wife. And, Tiffany uh, Amber Tiffany, Thiessen. yes, yes. <laughs> I really enjoyed her in that part. I remember thinking, oh, her, <laughs> when yeah. she was on it. And now I think of her as that, as Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. But she was so good in that uh, show. So, uh, And it, it was cute when they were... So they had decided to put on a party to try to yes. capture the guy. And they were basically in, like, the evidence locker. <laughs> right. Just <laughs> pulling out stuff that would come in handy, like caviar. <laughs> and scotch. <laughs> yes. That was fun. And then he was going to use the loft with, like, there was a crime scene. And <laughs> there was thing. an actual chalk outline <laughs> on the floor. Um, yeah. That was, uh, you're not much of a procedural person, but... Uh, what did you think fun. of the show? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's it's a classic kind of procedural that's, you know, just fun to kind of dip into, follow yes. along. You know, there's not a whole other story. I mean, there is the story of yes. the um, ex-con or whatever who right. is working with them. Um, yes. And he's trying to figure out what happened to his girlfriend. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, but you don't need that. You know, yes. you can just follow this. The Absolutely. Good guys, bad guys. Story, yep. So. I like that. That's the kind of procedural I like. You can have a little, you can have a little tiny bit of continuing storyline, but I don't want it to be all about that. I want to have a case right. a week that we solve and we move on and we feel good at the end. The bad mm-hmm. guy gets trounced by a, you know, 98 pound FBI agent <laughs> in a jogging suit right. and we move on. Um, but the, uh, the character of Mozzie, who's Willie Garson, who we've seen, mm-hmm. he was in John from Cincinnati. He's been in a lot of stuff. Um, he, he gets more and more involved with the FBI as it goes along though. So always as a, a you know, objecting 
<laughs> over yeah. his own objections. And mm-hmm. he and uh, Elizabeth get a really cute friendship going. And mm-hmm. uh, so, you know, it, it all integrates as they go along. But right. here at the beginning, it was, it was just light and fun. And uh, I really enjoyed revisiting it. I might watch yeah. some more of them. And uh, we'll we'll have to drop some more USA procedurals in here as we go. There's still Burn Notice you haven't seen, which was right. a classic fun one. And uh, Royal Pains, which was medical, but still. Um, I like medical shows. Yeah, yeah, sort of the same brand. Um, mm-hmm. So I'll pick out some of those down the line. But thanks for watching this one. It was really, really fun to visit it again, even if we did yeah. not see sufficient amounts of Natalie Morales to really justify <laughs> having that have been the hook. But... Uh, Always nice to see actors and actresses you enjoy employed. Yes. So what is... Now, next week, we are going to have a rerun because Catherine's going to be in Greece. Uh-huh. Having fun. <laughs> so Missing missing Terry. Very miss, much. I'm sure. I'm sure you will be <laughs> desperately upset at my absence. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we're going to, we're over the summer here, we've got vacations. We're going to be having lots of reruns on Parenting Roundabout, though we will make them special for you. We will bundle them up and uh, uh, have it be something interesting. So yeah. There will be something for you to listen to and That's enjoy. Right. Uh, so in two weeks, when we come back, what will our challenge be? What will you have watched on airplanes and stuff for me to see? Um, I will have watched and will challenge you to watch Coco, the right. Pixar movie that we didn't get to when it originally came out. Yeah. Um, that is set in Mexico and has some fun music and, um, you know, from what we have heard, a great story. So yeah. we are going to watch I thought watch you had that. seen that. Why did I think you had seen that? No. Did you talk I... about going to see it at one point and then your kids wanted to see something else or something like that? I don't know. Maybe. I thought Could that you be. had. But you will. And uh, I, I will. will. Yeah, <laughs> and it's on it's Netflix, on Netflix. That's, Okay, excellent. That's the good news. And I have two that... weeks to watch it, so right. very good. And then we will also, in two weeks, be watching uh, episodes 18 and 19 of Trophy Wife, which are couples therapy already. They just got married. Couples (laughs) therapy and The Minutes. And we will watch the episode of West Wing called Jefferson Lives. Very happy to no longer have case file numbers as our episode time. Yes. (laughs) Go with that, guys. That's, That's the way to go. And that will be it for our round two this week. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes, including our daily speed rounds and weekly group chats. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Goodbye, Catherine. Bye, Terry. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>